We're live? All right, good, okay. So, very quiet today. <laughs> so, hello everyone, welcome back to another Facebook Live yoga video. Happy Friday, I hope you've had a lovely week. I hope you're looking forward to the weekend and I hope you've enjoyed the nice sunny weather we've been having as well. I've got a tan. <laughs> you might not be able to tell, but I have got a tan. I'm actually quite hot to the touch. I think I'm probably a little bit burnt. But enough about me. So today we are going to be doing uh, another sort of yin inspired yoga class. So this isn't a yin class. We're not going to be holding the postures for as long as you would maybe in a traditional class, but it's yin inspired. So we're going to be doing fewer postures. We are going to be holding them just for a little bit longer. And we're going to be uh, using props today as well, just to help us relax into the posture. So with yin and other styles like uh, restorative yoga, you use a lot more props and it just allows the body to kind of really relax. You don't have to be engaging any muscles to keep the, the structure of the posture. So we use props to help us in this style of yoga. You're gonna need a block or something similar. So there's loads of stuff around the house you can use instead of a block, you could use a fat book. <laughs> if you have a fat book or, or something with like a block shape to it. So um, yeah, just make sure you have something like that handy. Maybe a couple of books if you haven't got like a fat book. And that's what you're going to need. We're going to be focusing on the upper back a little bit. Now this area, what can I say about the shoulder area? Nightmare, absolute nightmare. So for me, it's where I hold most of my tension. If I'm stressed, I tend to sort of <laughs> that's a thumbnail. I tend to like lift my shoulders up and they roll forward and my neck gets really tense. And actually uh, my neck is what I injure the most. Like if I injure anywhere, in my body, it's always my neck, and I still have that little injury. Um, I just tense up there. You may be similar. We hold a lot of tension in the shoulders. It's just the way it is. And also, if you are like me and you work at a desk, then we do this a lot. So we roll the shoulders forward a lot. We tend to round in the upper back. And a lot of the movements we're going to do today are focused on whoosh, lifting the shoulders back, <laughs> popping the chest out a little bit, and then just sort of... Uh, around the throat area. Okay, I mean, if you're into uh, the subtle body and, and energies, then this has a lot to do with the throat chakra as well. So sometimes if you feel like you can't speak out or if you've got something, something to say and you're struggling to say it, energetically you end up holding a lot of tension around this area too. So a lot of uh, postures today, uh, maybe, <laughs> be hopefully opening up into the throat a little bit too. So we're going to do some neck stretches. Now you just want to be mindful as you move through today's class. Like I said, we're going to be holding postures for a little bit longer. The, the point of this really is to see if we can find a position of stillness within the posture. There's probably going to be a few times where you want to come out. That's okay. Just come out. If you feel any sharp or shooting pain, you do need to exit the posture. But let's see if, uh, if in the absence of pain, if we can just sit with those uncomfortable feelings especially because this area is, you know, a bit of a problem area to work with. Sit with those uncomfortable feelings, see if you can breathe through them, maybe take a couple of deep breaths, let the muscles relax, and then see if you can maybe go just a couple centimeters further, if appropriate. All depends on your body. All right, well, actually, a bit different to begin with. Today, we're gonna be working with some pranayama. So pranayama in yoga is a part of yoga. If you practice Ashtanga yoga, uh, there's eight limbs. One of the limbs is asana, which is our postures, and one of the limbs is pranayama, breath control. So prana is like life energy, you know, the breath, and yama is to control or restrain. It depends on, on what well, Google site you go to, <laughs> what it means. But we're going to be controlling the breath. We're going to be starting in a seated position. Now, you might be thinking, Ashley, what does this have to do with the shoulders? Everything. So when we're in these seated postures, very easy, again, to sort of slouch the shoulders forward. As we move through this first pranayama exercise, let's see if we can extend through the spine, gently roll the shoulders back and keep the chest nice and broad. So we're going to be working with Samariti. My pronunciation's not the best. Very Essex. Samariti. Uh, equal breath. Okay, so very simply, it's we're going to bring a count into the breath. We're going to see if we can just level out the inhales and exhales. Very helpful exercise. Now, if you want to come to your mat, <laughs> slowly like I am, 
And then you actually may need a block or a pillow or something in this. So if your hips are tight, sitting on the floor is going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. So if that is you, if you come to your cross leg position, and then if your knees are super duper high, you might want to sit on a block because it's going to allow the knees to release a little bit further down to the floor. It just provides a bit more space for the hips to open. If you're comfortable sitting on the mat without the block, absolutely go ahead and do that. But just bear in mind that if your hips are tight, you might want to sit on something. Lift the hips up a little bit. Ideally, uh, we're looking to get the knees eventually below the hips. <laughs> it's a journey. It's a journey. Don't worry about it. Okay, so come into a comfortable cross leg position. We are going to take E well, up to you. You can take the hands to the knees just like this, or you can bring your pointy finger and your thumb into a little circle. The other three fingers are straight and then place the back of the wrists on the knees. Up to you. I don't mind what you want to do. The only added benefit of having uh, the back of the wrists on the knees is you can gently press the back of the wrists into the knees to help lift the chest. So we're trying to keep the arms straight. We want the arms straight because, you know, as soon as the elbows bend, it's usually a sign that you've lost the length through the spine. Everything's just getting a bit more compressed. With the arms straight, it tends to lift the chest. That's it. But you can have the hands on the knees as long as you keep that length through the spine. So we're sitting up nice and tall, extending through the crown of the head, but gently tucking the chin in towards the chest. Keeping the chest broad and then notice what your shoulders are doing. So very, very tempting. It's just supernatural for us, unfortunately, to have the shoulders rolling forward, but see if you can drag them down, drag them, roll them uh, back and down the spine and then just hold it here. So you can have your eyes open, you can shut your eyes, totally up to you, and just start to slow the breath down to begin with. At this point, we're not bringing the count into the breath. We're just seeing if we can find a steady rhythm. So something that's sustainable for you, just warming the body up. So like uh, yoga postures, like our physical stuff, when we come to work with the breath, you can't just jump in at the higher end. You need to start slowly, work your way up like anything. So we're breathing through the nose. Feeling the chest, the rib cage rise and fall. And you, this is challenging, you know, it's hard. I was a smoker for a very long time. I still use an e-cigarette, makes it a little bit harder for me. <laughs> you know, if, if sometimes if you've got asthma, it can be a little bit tricky, but just do your best. And sometimes if the upper back muscles are a bit tight, can kind of restrict the movement as well. So we're just settling in, we're just bringing the attention to the body, to the breath. Not to a point of distraction, but just so that we can keep the shoulders rolling back and the spine nice and long. You'll have to keep coming back to it, because as soon as you take your attention away from it, the body just wants to sink, collapse, like a wet biscuit. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to begin this uh, short exercise. I'm going to count and then you're going to see if you can make the inhales and exhales last for as long as I'm counting. So we're going to start with a count of three and we'll work our way up to a count of ten. Now, if at any point it feels uncomfortable, then you just knock the number back a little bit and then ignore me and just work with your own sort of pace. Okay. So take an exhale through the nose, fantastic. Then inhale for one, two, three. Exhale for one, two, three. Inhale one, two, three. Exhale for one, two, three. Inhale one, two, three. Exhale one, two, 
three. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten okay so slowing that breath down so just now releasing the count finding a steady rhythm that you can maintain so now you're just breathing naturally but still trying to keep that breath as slow as is comfortable Lovely. And then just open your eyes if they're shut. And then I think we're going to begin. So yeah, that's Samo Ritti. We actually do it in quite a few of my classes, towards the end usually. And uh, a lot of the feedback I get is that people didn't think they could hold their breath for, for the 10. But obviously building up, you know, starting with three, building up, uh, getting used to that rhythm, that movement. Um, eventually you just start to build it up a little bit longer. So that's probably one of the more simple pranayama exercises you can do. Very good for anxiety if you feel a little bit stressed. Obviously taking a few deep breaths can be super helpful. So now we're just going to move through some of these uh, postures deliberately for our shoulders. So we are going to stay in our comfortable seated position. Feel free to uh, shift around if your knees are becoming a bit uncomfortable. Maybe grab a block to sit on because we are going to be here for a little while. And then we are going to begin with some neck stretches. Very simple, um, like I said, as well as, uh, <laughs> as well as physically holding a lot of tension in the neck and the shoulders. Shoulders lift up, jaws start tensing. Energetically, the throat, the, the shoulder area, it carries a lot of tension from things being unsaid, from stuff you want to say that you haven't really <laughs> uh, managed to say yet. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff's going on in this area. Okay, so we're going to start these neck stretches. So we're going to place the left hand on the left knee to begin with. And then very simply, we're just going to use the right hand to take the left side of the head. You inhale here, then as you exhale, just very gently ease your right ear down towards your right shoulder. So we're not pressing down too heavy with this hand. It's a very sort of gentle touch, not yanking the neck down. Right ear comes down towards that shoulder. Eyes open or shut, really up to you, whatever's comfortable. And you should be feeling this really deep stretch, left side of the neck, 
down towards that left shoulder. And then you're just breathing deeply. So we're not going to hold this for as long as uh, some of the other postures. That's why I say it's sort of yin inspired rather than an actual yin class. But this is a, a really um, beneficial little stretch. And it's actually quite intense. While it doesn't look like much, I'm sure you'll agree that it can <laughs> feel a little bit intense. We don't tend to do that often. Now you can stay here. If you want to sort of deepen the posture, what you would do is you would take your left hand off the leg, off the knee, and you can just crawl it out to the side and then maybe gently press down through either the left palm or the fingers. So the act of crawling the arm out to the side will just lengthen that stretch. You start to feel it maybe even towards uh, the top of the left arm here. A few more deep, steady moments. Okay, lovely, and then just release that. Okay, head back to center very gently, and then we'll change sides. So we're gonna leave the right hand on the right knee to begin with. We're gonna take the left hand to the right side of the head. You inhale here, then exhale very gently, guiding the left ear down towards the left shoulder. Eyes open or closed. Noticing uh, if one side feels a little bit different to the other. So one side might feel a little bit tighter, just something to be aware of. Still trying to keep the uh, spine nice and tall, hips lifted. And then if you wanted a deeper stretch, your choice, you can crawl those right fingertips out to the side and then gently press down through the right fingertips, lengthening the stretch towards the right shoulder, down the top of the right arm. Okay, lovely, and then as you inhale, just very slowly release, bring your head back up to center, and then we're gonna come into the back of the neck now. So you're gonna interlace your hands, you're gonna place the hands on the back of your head. Now, as we come through this, remember, we're gonna to wanna to round the back. So inhale here, then as you exhale, we're just gonna gently use the hands to tilt the chin in towards the chest, and we're gonna gently just squeeze the elbows together, and then round the back. So feeling that stretch come into the back of the neck as well as down the upper back now. Again, we're not pulling on the back of the head, it's just a bit of gentle pressure. A few more deep breaths here. Okay, and then as you inhale back up to center, lovely, give your shoulders a little shake. So now we're gonna come into a little uh, seated twist. So again, reshuffle the legs if you feel like you need to move or grab a block if you, <laughs> I'm sitting on a block, there's no way I'm gonna offer out all of this. So sit on a block if you wanna use that. And then we're just gonna come through this twist. So a very good way to start to work into the spine, the, the tight back muscles as well as the shoulder. So to begin with, we're gonna place the right hand on the floor behind us. We're gonna place the left hand just above the right knee. You inhale, extend through the base of the spine, so sit up nice and tall, and then as you exhale, we're just very simply twisting around towards the right here. Roll in that right shoulder back, and then maybe, if appropriate for your neck, gently turn in and looking over the right shoulder. So, I find this quite intense, you might be the same. It's a, quite a deep twist. You can use the left hand above the knee to help rotate the body, eventually seeing if we can just get that chest a little bit more open towards the side. And obviously the more you roll that right shoulder back, the more you're working into that area. So it's really difficult to keep the length through the spine, but just do your best. You can place the uh, right arm right up against the back to help support the posture if you need to, otherwise you can let that control come from the core instead. Every inhale finding some space and every exhale just moving into that space. And 
Okay, and then as you exhale, come back to centre and we'll do the same thing the other side. So now placing the left hand on the floor behind us, the right hand just above the left knee. You're going to inhale, lift first, extend, and then exhale, just gently opening the chest up towards the left now. Roll in that left shoulder back as much as it will allow, and then maybe tilting the head back, looking over that left shoulder, if that feels comfortable for your neck. And then using the right arm as a lever to help us rotate, seeing if we can open the chest up a little bit more towards the side, and then keep moving forward on your sit bones, keep the hips lifted if possible. Center. Lovely, just give your shoulders a little shake. Wonderful. So now we're going to come into a seated forward fold. So you can do this on the block, absolutely, or you can remove the block. I personally find removing the block for this one to be, a, at least for my body, a little bit more comfortable, but you can stay on the block if you want. We're going to come into something which is designed for shoulders and hips. So this is also a hip opener. So we're going to cross our legs. We're going to have the right calf on top of the left leg. So the right leg's on top, the left leg's on bottom, okay? Probably feels just like you're crossing your legs if you're right-handed, but very natural. And then from here, we are going to roll the shoulders back. So really see if you can squeeze those shoulders back as much as possible. We're going to then see if we can take hold of our own elbows. So if you can't take hold of the elbows, no stress. Just take hold of the wrists or you can take the forearms, but if possible, elbows. Then sit up nice and tall. You should be feeling that stretch into the shoulders. Inhale, lift, and then as you exhale, we're gonna fold forward. Doesn't matter how far you fold. So you might just stay a few inches in your fold, and from there, you can just drop the head. Now you might be coming down a little bit further. Doesn't matter, just fold in as far as is comfortable. Whenever you're in your fold, let the head totally relax and let the neck completely go. So if you're coming down low enough, obviously you can just place your forehead on the floor. You can actually place your forehead underneath a block if you're sort of hovering off the floor and you wanna place your head on something. Or you're upright, it doesn't matter. Either way, just keep those shoulders rolling back. So as you fold forward, the shoulders are gonna to wanna to naturally drop towards the floor, but we're seeing if we can counter that by gently squeezing the shoulder blades together. I'm gonna to have a big red mark on my forehead when I come up. And then just seeing if you can relax as much as possible. So we are working into the hips as well. So if hips are tight, this might be quite uncomfortable, but you're doing a fantastic job. Remember, you can sit on the block. Or your fat book. Just seeing if we can find a place to be still in for a few deep breaths, keeping the shoulders rolling back. <laughs> People just like sign it, like logging onto this video, being, What is she doing? <laughs> We're having a rest. We're having a rest. <laughs> Okay, lovely. Then as you inhale very slowly, just make your way back up, all the way into seated. And then we are going to cross <laughs> my hair. We're going to cross the legs the other way. Okay, so you can, uh, if you need a bit of help, just sort of release your arms. And then we'll do the cross leg bit first. So this time, this is going to feel probably quite weird. We are going to cross our left leg on top of the right. So now the left shin is on top of the right shin, and uh, this is really quite strange. <laughs> A really strange feel to the posture, but I want to balance out the hips. I want to, I want to get into both hips. So we're going to cross the left leg, top of the right. Again, squeezing the shoulders together. Now, up to you. This time, you can take hold of the elbows, or if you want to come into reverse prayer, you're more than welcome to do that. Now, reverse prayer, you take your shoulders back, you feed your fingertips up the spine, so they're facing up towards the ceiling, and then you press your palms together. So it's this position here, exactly the same but just behind the back fingers face up so you are coming into reverse prayer or you take hold of the elbows and inhale lift and exhale just fold forward again a little bit more challenging now <laughs> especially in reverse prayer with the legs crossed the other way it can feel a little bit awkward but just 
basically seeing if we can uh, try and counteract the shoulders rolling forward by keeping them squeezing together. Okay, a few more deep breaths here. Okay, lovely. And then inhale, make your way back up into seated. Uncross your legs, give your legs a little shake. And then we're going to make our way into all fours because obviously we're going to come through some cat cows because I love a cat cow. But also cat cows are a great sort of a great posture for, for so many things, including shoulders. So as you inhale, you gently squeeze the shoulders together. You start to lift the chest. And then as you exhale, you really round the back. You arch the spine. And the more you push into the hands, the deeper the it should feel quite nice. Your way into all fours. Fingers spread underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Top of the feet on the floor. And then as you inhale, just lift the hips, lift the chest, look forward. So this is where we squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then as you exhale, we're round in the back. So press into the hands, tuck the chin in towards the chest and arch the spine. Feels really good for the shoulders, upper back. And then your inhale lifts the hips, lifts the chest, your belly drops, you gently pull your shoulder blades together. And then as you exhale, you just start to round. So really arching the spine up towards the ceiling and feeling that wave through the spine, stretching into all of those upper back muscles, or all back muscles really. And it's just a very good thing to do for, for like the mobility of our spine as well. Okay, so use your breath to guide the movement, the whole of the inhale lifts, the whole of the exhale tucks. And you're not powering through these. <laughs> these are slow, very slow, deliberate movements. Now at the end of your next exhale, we're going to hold that round. So as you exhale and round the spine, no rush, but just uh, come into it when you're ready. Really arch the back up towards the ceiling, tuck the chin in towards the chest and press into the hands. Really see if we can tuck the hips under here as well. You can feel quite intense when you hold it for a little bit longer, but a few more breaths. and then just come back to a flat back lovely so we're going to come into child's pose now we're going to have our feet together we're going to take the knees as wide as the mat and then we're going to just sink the bum down towards the heels so with child's pose you want to see whatever you're doing whether the knees are wide or together you want to get your butt and your heels as close together as possible because that's what creates the stretch in the lower back uh, if you have a tight lower back uh, in this version, if you have tight hips, it's going to be really difficult, but just do your best. There's a real backward pull with the bum. And then we're going to extend the arms out in front of us. And then we're just going to lay the forehead down towards the floor. Now, you can put your forehead on a block if you want to do that. Um, if you've got bolsters, if you've got a whole like, yoga jungle gym there, you can place a, a bolster underneath the body and then just lie there. But I don't have bolsters. <laughs> I was going to say, because I'm not a wimp. Uh, bolsters don't make you wimpy, it's fine. But you can put a pillow or a bolster underneath the belly if you want. And then this is a great posture for your lower back, hips, groin. But we are going to sort of bring the shoulders into it now. So inhale here, then as you exhale, very simply just walk both hands over towards the right. So the hips are going to stay low, the hips are going to stay drawing back towards the bum. We're just moving the hands over towards the right, forehead drops, and then crawl your fingertips forward. Get the arms as straight as you can, and then see if you can roll your armpits down towards the floor. You should especially feel this sort of uh, quite deep stretch around your left shoulder, lengthening through that left side body. And then we're just going to hold it here for a few deep breaths. So crawling those fingertips forward, seeing if we can straighten the arms and then working the armpits down towards the floor, keeping broad across the upper back.
Okay, lovely. And then as you inhale, arms back to centre. And then on your exhale, let's just move the hands over towards the left. Okay, so still drawing the bum down towards the heels. But really, as we draw the bum down to the heels, we're crawling those fingertips forward, seeing if we can get the arms as straight as possible, and then rolling the armpits down towards the floor. And then hopefully feeling this big stretch in your right shoulder. So extend it through the right side body here. And then inhale, come back to centre. Lovely. So if you need a rester from child's pose, I know that sounds weird. But we are going to do something else now from child's pose. So if you need to wiggle your hips in between, absolutely go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're staying in this wide leg child's pose position. This time we're going to bring some, uh, some needle arms into it. So very similar to a post posture called thread needle, except this time our legs are in child's pose. I believe it's quite, uh, at least for me, it feels a little bit deeper. So from here, from this child's pose position, we're still drawing the bum down towards the heels. We're just going to very simply thread our right arm underneath our left and then lay the right cheek on the floor. We're looking towards the left. So we've got the right cheek on the floor. The right arm has threaded underneath the left arm. The left arm is straight. Crawl the left fingertips forward. Draw the left armpit down gently. And then the, the whole sort of weight of the body is coming down into that right shoulder, working into that area as well as stretching across the upper back. So this is also a twist. And then we are going to hold it here, okay? Nice, slow, steady breaths. Going to hold it for a slow count of 10. Okay, so one. Deep, slow breaths. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Really seeing if you can relax every part of the body. Nothing needs to be active here. Nothing needs to be engaged. Nine. And ten. Lovely. So from here, untangle yourself. You might find that you need to give your hips a little bit of a wiggle because we've been holding this wide position for a while. But otherwise. We are just going to come straight into the other side. So now threading the left arm underneath the right, laying the left cheek down and looking right. Crawling the right fingertips forward, armpit draws down towards the floor, and then feeling that big stretch left shoulder. So, so this isn't a, I feel like I need to say it, this isn't a yin class, it's, it's very different, but it's sort of yin inspired, and it's, it presents its own set of challenges, holding postures for a while, it kind of hurts in a different way than going through something super active like Ashtanga. So we've been holding this for a while, especially with the leg positioning, you may start to feel some sort of uncomfortableness in the hips as they start to open up, as they sort of kind of like accept the posture can feel a little bit uncomfortable sometimes but as long as you're not feeling any sharp or shooting pain just see if you can stay here and stick with it and then we're going to hold this for one two three four Six, seven, eight. 
eight. nine and ten lovely so from here just untangle and then push yourself back up into uh, all fours bring your knees together and this time sink the bum down towards the heels with the knees and the feet together so this hopefully should feel quite nice just coming into a, a closed leg child's pose now and then letting the head drop down towards the floor And we're going to bring the arms either side of the body and just let the shoulders relax down. So sometimes in this we think the shoulders are relaxed, but so sometimes there's a little bit of a leftover tension. They, they kind of want to like seize up. But seeing if we can really allow them to be super floppy just for a few breaths here. Okay, and you can stay here or to just bring in an added little shoulder stretch into it. We're going to interlace the hands behind the back, gently squeezing the shoulder blades together this time. Seeing if we can get the arms as straight as possible as we inhale, lift the hands away from the lower back. So um, we're still keeping the bum quite close to the heels here. So we're not lifting the bum as we do this. The whole of the movement is coming from the shoulder, so isolating that movement. Reach in the arms up as high as you can, but don't worry if they only move a couple of uh, a couple of inches. That's not a problem. If shoulders are tight and they get really tight, this might feel a bit uncomfortable. Just doing your best, keeping the breath steady. Few more moments here, and then exhale. Just let the arms flop either side of the body. Give your wrists a wriggle, maybe if you need to, before coming up into seated and <laughs> grabbing your block or your fat book okay so the next uh oh, the last two postures we're going to do really are on our bellies so you're going to need a block or something similar for this one because we are going to rest the forehead on the block this is a uh, i love this posture it's a really great shoulder opener so on our bellies what we are going to do <laughs> if i can get it right is we are going to now thread the right arm and the left arm sort of across one another. <laughs> so take, I'm not very good at explaining this one. So take the right arm out diagonally, just like I'm doing here, and then place the left arm across the right arm. So it's almost like the left elbow is glued on top of the right. So the left arm's on top, the right arm's underneath, both arms are coming out to the side, palms up, okay? And then from here, you're just gonna lay your forehead down on the block. <laughs> so you might need to do some shuffling with this one. So shuffle around until you sort of find that position. We've got the right arm underneath, the left arm's on top. And we're sort of uh, crisscrossing the arms and then laying the forehead down. I've got too much hair on this block. And then you're just gonna relax. <laughs> that's better <laughs> so feel free to do some shuffling and once again I'll just quickly explain so we're lying on our bellies we've got the right arm on the bottom the left arm's on top and then we're crossing the arms out to the side so if you have a look at me <laughs> and then we're just relaxing as much as possible so it's, a, it's an intense Stretch, laying the weight of the body down, resting the forehead on a block. Palms are facing up, but there's no effort in the arms. breaths here. Just really seeing if you can relax as much as possible. It's quite a deep shoulder opener, especially for that uh, right shoulder in this case. And 
Okay, lovely. Now, slowly lift your head, and then we're going to do the same thing the other side. So this time, your right arm is going to come on top of your left arm. Okay? So we're just changing sides. The right arm's on top. Left arm is on the bottom, and then again, same thing. Just sort of crossing the arms, finding that point that you can be comfortable in, and then laying the head down on the block and seeing if you can just relax. Bringing a, a deeper stretch into the left shoulder this time. Slow, steady breaths, doing a great job. Just a few more moments here. Okay, lovely. And then just untangle. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Come up into seated, maybe just give your shoulders a little shake. Grab a drink if you want to drink. And then um, we're going to show you what we're going to do. Last one, last shoulder opener today. And this one, I'm not going to lie, is, is a, little bit, <laughs> a little bit intense. So this one really uh, kind of works against that sort of movement we've, we've all become accustomed to of the shoulders rolling forward. It's a, a real kind of like stretch across this area here. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because it's very difficult to explain. <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to show you first. So again, this is a, another posture where we start on our belly. And I'm going to show you what this looks like from both sides. Okay. So we'll start with the right arm. So from our bellies, we're going to place the right arm in this position here on the floor. <laughs> okay. So basically, I'm on my stomach. I've got my right arm in a 90 degree angle, the right palm's facing down. Now from here, I'm gonna place my other hand, the opposite hand, left hand on the floor. Okay, elbow's gonna be stacked. So I'll show you what this looks like from the other side in a minute. So I've got my right arm at a 90 degree angle on the floor. I'm looking left, so my right cheek's on the floor, my left hand's on the floor, the elbow's over the wrist. Now from here, very simply what I do is I roll over onto my right side, okay. I roll onto my right side, and then already you should start to feel a stretch in the uh, front of the right shoulder. Now, if you want more stretch, instead of keeping the legs stacked like this, what you would do is you'd take the top leg and you would roll it over the body, and then you'd place the foot on the floor, and that's gonna draw a deeper stretch into that right arm if you need a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like from the other side so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I had my right arm at a 90 degree angle. <laughs> my left hand, this is what you didn't see, is on the floor. My elbow is over that wrist. I roll over to my side, so I start to roll into that right arm. For more stretch, you lift the left leg up, you roll it over the body, and you place the foot on the floor. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like front on. So we're gonna have a go at that together. <laughs> it might be a little bit confusing at first. <laughs> It is a, it confused me when I, I first done it as well. I was like, you want me to do what? But you should feel this huge stretch anyway. It's a good posture. So from our tummies, I'll explain it nice and slowly. Arm down on the floor. Okay, so the right arm's at a 90 degree angle. We have the wrist in line with the elbow, the elbow in line with the shoulder, and the palm is flat on the floor. We're gonna place the right cheek on the floor, look left, and then you're gonna place your left hand just sort of in front of the face, some distance away, the left elbow is over the wrist. Then from here, you're gonna very slowly start to roll onto your right side. And you, to begin with, just keep the um, left leg on top of the right and see how that feels. Now, if you want more of a stretch, what you'd do is you'd take your top leg, so your left leg, you would roll it over the body and then you'd place the sole of your left foot on the floor and then you would just roll a bit deeper in that case into that right shoulder and then breathe. <laughs> okay, 
So yeah, should be feeling something top of the right uh, shoulder now. And then we're just gonna hold it here, okay? Nice, slow, steady breath. We're gonna hold it for a count of 10. So seeing if you can sort of meet your edge. So to make this a little bit gentler, all you would do is bring the weight further back towards the left. To make it a bit deeper, you would just start to take the weight further into towards that right shoulder. So holding it here for one. So right shoulder's on the floor. Two. Three, deep, slow breaths, just seeing if you can relax into it as much as possible. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, lovely. So to come out, just bring your top leg back on top of the right leg, just roll back onto your tummy, and then just take a moment here to let the sensation come back into your right shoulder. Maybe give that arm a little bit of a wriggle. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but with the left arm now. Okay, so your left arm is out at a 90 degree angle, wrist over elbow, elbow in line with shoulder and palm down. This time you're placing the left cheek on the floor, you're looking right. You've got the right hand on the floor, right elbow is over that wrist. Inhale here, then as you exhale, just roll onto your left side. Oh, we're gonna have to move over a bit. See how that feels, this might like this, Remember, one side might be different. So this is my tight shoulder for some reason, <laughs> which is weird because I'm right-handed. But uh, this feels a lot tighter for me, so it might be the same for you. You can stay here. But if you did want a deeper uh, stretch, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up that right leg, swing the right foot over the body, <laughs> and then just hold it here. So for me, that's not going to happen today. I'm going to just place my leg back where it was. <laughs> okay, and then holding it here for 10 one, here you go, deep breaths, two, so really feeling that stretch left shoulder, three, four, five, doing really well, six, Seven, it's not the most glamorous looking yoga class, is it? I, honestly, if you, if you watch this and you think it doesn't look like anything, you do it and then come back to me. Nine. And ten, lovely, roll back onto your tummies. Maybe give your left shoulder a bit of a shake. And then once you're ready, you're just going to make your way up into all fours. Now we're actually going to come into Shavasana now, but because this is a shoulder opening class, I want to give you an option of some stuff you can do with the block. And this, this does feel quite nice. So Shavasana, basically the legs are going to be exactly the same, but what you can do is you can place a block underneath the upper back. Okay, again, it might take you to do some like adjusting to get that sort of like spot that feels quite comfortable you can place oh my god my hair you can place a block underneath the upper back and then you can kind of just come into ignore that other block for now and then you can come into shavasana with the legs straight or knees bent hands either side of the body but because you've got the block underneath the uh, upper back round the shoulder blade area you've just got this lovely sort of openness expansiveness in the chest and everything's opening up around that center so if it doesn't feel comfortable to just let your head hang back, you can also place another block underneath the back of your head. Okay? And this is actually very, very comfortable. <laughs> I can stay in this all day. So some people don't like to have the block underneath the head. They prefer uh, to make it a little bit deeper by letting the head drop down. But uh, for some people that is uncomfortable. So another block or a pillow or something to lift the head while the block is underneath the upper back. And, and you just have that sort of lovely openness, like I said, around that chest area. Coming back to that throat chakra stuff I was talking about earlier, if you subscribe to that. If not, no worries. You're still getting that nice shoulder opening. 
And then we're just going to take a few deep breaths here, just totally relaxing, letting the body sink down, hips heavy, legs heavy. And then the palms face the ceiling to help keep the shoulders rolling back so the chest is nice and open. I could fall asleep here, I swear to God. <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to leave you in this position. Now, you absolutely stay here for as long as you want. Honestly, I would stay here with you, but I would 100% fall asleep. So stay in here for as long as you like, absolutely. Whenever you're ready, just gently make your way out of the posture. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a nice, relaxing time with me. And um, I'll see you when I see you next. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Ah, oh, finished.